Okay, so I'm picking off right where I left off in the last video where we just made the simple point and click system. If you didn't see that, then you can check the description for the exact uh, point and click system. Uh, there's, of course, it's not the most advanced point and click system in the world, but we have a simple like lerp in a sense, and we have a simple smoothing uh, for our character. But what I really want to do now is I want to make it so that there's objects in the world and we can click E to interact with them and have a little alert pop up. So how could I do that? Well, I would need to have some sort of area and I would need to, yeah, I would have to have some area here, so area 2D. So essentially what I just did there was I made a new scene. I don't know if you saw, but I made a new scene and I just, oops, not that, but I went to other node as the parent and I clicked area 2D, area 2D. And then I'm going to attach a collision shape there and I'm going to add a sprite. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the collision shape just a box or a circle. Just to make it simple, I'm going to make it a simple circle. And I'm just going to name it like base uh, object or whatever, you know, base object. And um, I'm just going to save it as base object. So I'm just going to make a folder here as objects and we have base object. Now what I want to do is I want to close this um, first scene that I made. I'm going to go to base object. I'm going to go to scene. I'm going to do new inherited scene. I'm going to go over here to new inherited scene. And I'm going to open this base object file. Now you can see that we have two exactly identical scenes but one has yellow text the reason it has yellow text is because these are the nodes that come from the base object new inherited scene literally means that this unsaved scene inherits everything from this base object so we can just make simple copies and modify them a bit so maybe i want this one to be called well to know what i want it to be called is i actually have to look here and i have to like look at i don't know let's let's grab a tree so if i go over here to region enable select region and i go over here to tree Da, da, da. We have a tree now. Da, da. Okay, we have a tree. I have put a tree as my sprite. I have a collision shape on it, and I'm just going to name this tree. Okay, cool. Tree, save tree. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back to my base object, and I want to attach a script as base object.gd, and I basically want to say is func underscore um, in my ready function, I'm going to connect. Sorry, I'm not going to connect. I'm going to do body entered dot connect. And what I'm doing a signal connection here, so I'm going to say uh, if the body entered signal is emitted or you know sent out, then I want to connect to a function, and this function is going to be on body body enter. I'm purposely spelling it wrong and incorrectly, so you understand that the spelling doesn't matter. What matters is what is where in the scene and like where I'm typing it. So you can see, oops, I pointed with my hand, but you can see over here, on body enter is the same as this one, and essentially I want to say. Uh, you know, this function doesn't return anything, that's what the void is there for, but it does take in a physics body, body and then physics body here, so it takes in the physics body 2D, so if body, then, if the body enters, then we're just going to uh, say os dot window or alert um, text is going to be hello there and hi. So essentially what this means is if something enters our base object, we're just going to make a little window pop up saying, hello there, hi. And if I go back to my tree, you can see that the script is automatically there. Even though it doesn't look like anything happened, the tree has it and also at the base object has it. And now what I can do is I can go over here to my player, or sorry, not my player, but I can go over here to my tree and I can just drag my tree into the world and I can say to my player, you know, when you walk into that tree, make an alert happen. And of course, it only goes once you've touched the tree. And you can see that if I leave and come back, the tree says hello there. And it's the default native uh, Godot, or sorry, Windows window. Like, it's the window that says hi. That's the name of the window. And then it's just a little warning pop-up. Pretty cool. But uh, let's say I wanted to do that with signals or something uh, better, like a more global signal, perhaps. And essentially, what I want to say is I want to go instead of having like on body entered what i want to have is i want to be like i walk up to the object and the object highlights itself and then once the object is highlighted i can essentially say you know i want to press e to interact with it that's kind of what i'm going for instead so i'm going to do e to interact so i'm going to add that action i'm going to go over to my keyboard events and click e to map the e event so this could this could literally say hey, let's do f to interact actually no f to interact is a bad idea see e to interact and I'm just going to type in random stuff at the end because I, I just want I just want to. Okay, so now if I go back to my player, I have to go back to my input at action pressed. And I, I kind of want to just say if input dot is action just pressed, uh, if an action is just pressed, this E to interact. So again, if it's if I just press E, you know, 
uh, I try to interact. I try to interact. So essentially what that means is every time I press E, I try to interact will run, or this block of line, or this block here runs if I press E. That's all it means. Now, I essentially have to say, or the logic I want to do now, or the logic that I want to say on GDScript is, if I press E, okay, I'm going to actually draw this out and use my hands at the same time. If I press E, I want to check if there's an object, if there's an object somewhere around, like, did I touch an object? And if I touch an object, I want to essentially say, um, I want to, like, grab that object's, like, random text, so object.text, maybe. I want to grab the object text, and I want to um, display this object text somehow. So when I press E, I need to grab the object, and I need object.text to print itself out somewhere. So we could do that. That's pretty simple. So the way I could, one way I could do this, there's obviously a bunch of ways, but for the purposes of showing, showcasing global signals, which may or may not be the best way to do it, but it is a way to do it. Um, what I could do is I could say var object I am interacting with, interacting with, because of course there'll only ever be one object, so I could just name it, or I could give it the type no 2D. And essentially what I could do is I have to basically update object I'm interacting with before I uh, call anything on it. So essentially I have to make some sort of function or I have to make some way that all the nodes in my game can kind of connect and talk to each other without necessarily talking to the player because I don't want that to happen. I could do, or what I could do is I have to make a global script. So I'm going to go over here to my source. I'm going to do create new. I'm going to do script. I'm going to name this my global, my global uh, script helper manager um uh, that those are the only words i can think of right now but global script helper manager is just a really fancy way of saying i made a new gd script that isn't attached to a node but i'm going to attach it to the game what does that mean i'm going to go to my project settings i'm going to go to um general no i'm going to go to globals this is where we can add globals like essentially auto load singletons it's an idea that outside of your game which i will draw right now if your game is happening in this box, you have your player, you have enemies, you have, I don't know, health pickups, blah, you have everything happening in your game. There's a singleton which ex exists outside of your game, and it can have variables, it can have signals, it can have data, it could preload textures. But essentially, anyone inside the game can come and talk to the singleton, and it has one set of data, it has one state, it has one set of variables, and whatever changes here, everyone else gets that exact same information, no matter who it is, when it, when it is does matter but the idea is you have a shared resource that everyone can access no matter where they are in the game when they are in the game etc so i'm going to go over here i'm going to find the path you can see set path or press add to create a script uh, to create a skip script and then i could just go source and i could do global global script manager helper so i'm going to click add and I'm, it's already enabled i'm going to close it and what i want to say is i want to make a signal here which is update update object player is looking at okay now oops. Uh, to make this signal work is i have to go to my player and i basically have to say global you can see that this variable comes up in my autocomplete global dot i have to say global dot um that's signal name which is i already forgot the signal name but uh update oops what is the signal's name so if i just save the scene update you can see it just showed up so i have to save the scene and then i have to click control space to refresh this autocomplete but you can see update object player is looking at is a signal and i'm going to do dot connect dot connect to what i'm going to do update or i'm going to connect it to this random name so what i want to show here is what i want to show here is what i want to show here is that this auto load has this signal and i'm connecting this signal to this function that is like the best explanation ever. Auto load signal connects to this function, and this function I'm going to say was called by um, node name, and node name is a variable that we pass in. Now you might be wondering where the hell where the hell is node name coming from? Well, if I go back to my base object, and I essentially say on body entered, what I want to do is I want to tell I want to tell global script manager, hey, emit your signal, emit signal, update object player is looking at and this comma afterwards with this dot 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 is where I could type in the name so it's it's the same thing as saying self dot name but it's essentially the name of the object in the scene tree so for us it would be tree two a tree tree two tree three tree four so depending on the tree that we touch you can see was called by tree and if we go here tree two 
and then if we go here, tree three. Now, imagine if we wanted to pass in some data. Uh, that's as simple as just making a at exported variable, at exported var, um, I don't know, message, message, megs, let's just call it message for megs. No, that looks weird, message for like that. So var message is type string, a blank string. And if I go over to my, if I go over here, if I just type in message, instead of sending self.name, I could send message. And now notice how I'm just leaving this as no name. This could have been called anything in the world. It doesn't matter. And this would still run because this is just the variable name we're passing in. And of course, one thing to notice is that it is positional. So if I type in self.name afterwards, then the second variable, so the second variable, or I can't do numbers, but second var, would also come in, and that would be the name. So I'm just going to do prints here, so it's like separated by spaces and whatnot, instead of just being conjoined. But you can see here, we have prints, and oh, I'm just going to run the scene. Uh, actually, I can't run the scene yet, because I have to set each message, so I don't know. I'm a tree, or something like that. And then tree2 would say, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're, and then, you know, this one says something like this, and this one says tree, okay? Now, essentially, what happened is, you can see tree, tree, okay, that's a little weird. Okay, tree, tree four. Oh, I'm a tree. Oops, I didn't see that. Uh, but yeah, it is working. No, you are, and then tree two. So that is the um, variable or the message, and then we're that is message. So ASDF there is a message, and then afterwards we're passing in the name. But I just want to show that you can like send a message with signals. And the best part about this, the absolute best part about this, is imagine, just imagine, I have a, I have a really complex scene tree here. So I have a bunch of nodes, and I'm going like this. And I'm going like this, I'm going like this, and I'm going like this. And just to spice things up, I'm going to do a new inherited scene just to spice things up, base object. I'm going to call this on a rock, and then we have a sprite 2D, and we're going to drag in a new sprite enabled clip, uh, not clip, region, edit region. I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to look for my rock. I, there should have to be a rock, I don't know, like a web or something like that. Okay, I guess I, I didn't save it yet, so I could just call this web, web and then save and then if i go over here to my world and in my super nested complex uh, hierarchy if i have web i go i don't know spooderman here because it's a web spooderman you can see that it will still work regardless of anything because it is a signal and that signal does not care where you start where you end up when it is it will still work i didn't do anything to my code and it's working which feels amazing because look it's still running the same thing which is go to my global which again is just you know something that exists outside of the game over here, if this is the game, you know, I have all my fun stuff happening. My global script manager is over here, and my web, this is my web, my web goes over here and says, hey, um, global script helper manager, could you emit the signal ob update object player is looking at? And then it's like, oh, okay, cool, that's amazing. And then it essentially goes to my player over here, my player over here, and it tells my player, hey, by the way, this signal was emitted, and I and the player's like, oh yeah, I connected to that signal at ready, and now you're telling me to go run it? Okay, I'm going to go run that function, and it turns out that function, um, although it doesn't really update the object player is looking at, it does do something, which is, you know, it, it calls out the uh, message, and then it also prints out the name of that node, which is pretty cool, and you could expand on to make your own version, or use that, you know, message into a control node or a UI node and display some sort of message or information. But, you know, I'm just here to show how to actually work with uh, the item.